All right, so we got uh, Carlson's companion. Hey, what is up, guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Brown Dust video. All right, we will be continuing the guide today. We will be covering the five star defenders. But first, I wanted to do a Merc combine since I've uh, gotten plenty of units recently uh, i've been pulling yes uh we'll have that video up real soon you know one thing that i've been thinking to myself why haven't they done this yet give us an option to merc combine with companions as well right so we have a uh, lawrence which is carlson's companion right now which you can only dismantle so why not give the give us the option to do combine and then there's a chance for us to actually obtain a four star companion any more isabel martina all right i'll take her i will take her all right let's jump onto the video this video is sponsored by beautifulhello.com it's a website that has thousands of beautifully designed clothing to choose from pepe frog hoodie anime girl hoodie they have it all and it also has free shipping worldwide so you're gonna get your clothes no matter where you're from all right make sure to insert the relevant codes to get some discounts off check it out links will be in the description below okay so five star defenders like who should you actually pick from this list like i think this is much more easier than the warriors in my opinion because it's kind of obvious who you should be picking right now all right so if you are a new player again i think most new players are going to rely on this guide more so i'm going to favor the new players more so no offense to the veteran older players who, who have been playing the game for six months or one year but new players first all right if you have just started the game perhaps like a couple of weeks or two three months i think that's still fairly new you should only be looking at two units all right so cecilia and cowley ignore the rest like literally ignore the rest i know some people are going to be like oh what about glacia she's gonna get the plus 15 soon not soon that will be two to three months down the road it's not soon at all like in brown dust timeline it's not really soon in that amount of time you will be able to stack up enough resources to be building her later on plus picking her at plus nine what are you going to do what are you going to do you need her at plus 15 all right we're going to cover that later on let's talk about cecilia and cowley who do you have to pick and which one is better for you okay so there's just no competition don't go for Ser. don't go for zenith zenith still can be used for a cheese strategy for concentrated fire stuff but don't go for either one of those don't pick anyone else it's either going to be Kali cecilia yes i understand Kali cecilia can get one shotted by asmode and things like that but if you're new you shouldn't worry about that first getting a solid tank is going to be like much more beneficial to you all right so new players if you've been playing for two weeks, three weeks, or maybe one month, all right, Cowley is your best bet. Cowley is probably the best one to select from all of these. And calm down, calm down. I know some of you will be like, oh, what about Cecilia? Cecilia is better. No, she's not. No, she's not. I have my own reasons. Calm down. Let me explain. Let me explain. All right, calm down. Cowley is going to be better because... If you look at this game from a perspective of all the game modes right now, not just from PvP, alright? We're not just talking about PvP right here. I don't do that in this channel. I talk from a mercenary perspective from every single angle possible. World boss, campaign, co-op raid, underground arena, tournament, guild wars. Kaoli is going to be better because she has taunt, alright? So in guild wars, there's just no denying it. Kaoli is better. She has taunt. She's going to mess up your formation. Just having one plus nine Kaoli right there, you know, uh, you could trap your opponents if they don't know your turn order. If your Kaoli is going to move first or last and distract all the mages away, she's going to do that for you. Easy, free, easy peasy. All right. So Cecilia, she can't do that. I know some of you will be like, oh, you can just pair Cecilia with uh, Endolin, or you can just pair Cecilia with John. Yes, I know. I know. I'm not dumb, all right? Yes, you can do that. But new players are not going to have enough resources to do that. And plus, that's going to be very, very setup formation dependent, all right? So it's not something that new players should go for. Kaoli is much more easy and flexible in all the game modes. World Boss, she's really, really good in all the World Boss. Maybe not all. Maybe except for Arkstar. Alright, you cannot use Kaoli in World Boss Arkstar. 
You can use Kaolin, Orkdot, I've done a video on that. You can use Kaolin in Zaratan, Tyrion. She's the best mercenary right now to use in those uh, two world bosses, the transport world boss, because you need high HP mercenaries. Kaolin has the highest HP amongst all the mercenaries in the game. Alright, so there's no denying that. Yeah, there's no denying that she's the highest right now. Maybe later on we might have more high HP mercenaries, but as of now, there's no one that can beat Kali. And to one-shot Kali, you really need like very strong buffs, very strong supporter, and not many new players can do that. And I do think, I strongly believe that Kali might actually help you climb in the PvP ranks if you really want to focus on PvP. Having a proper setup Kaoli is going to help you with that. Alright, so this is going to be mostly for new players. Now, let's talk about Cecilia for a bit. I know, I know Cecilia deserves some spotlight. I have a plus 15 myself, not going to deny it. So that's the problem right here. One more reason why I would recommend Kaoli more than Cecilia. Because right here, if you look, we are only getting the plus 9. We're only getting the plus 9. You're not getting the plus 15, you're getting the plus 9. Alright, so in a lot of scenario, in a lot of cases, Cecilia plus 15 might be better. But we're not talking about Cecilia plus 15 right here, we're talking about plus 9. Alright, to get that resources up, to build them to the plus 15, Cecilia is really really strong at plus 15, like there's no denying it. Uh, she can actually, I've even seen some clips where she survived Anartus. Which is insane, like definitely insane. But you need plus 15 to do that, right? So plus 9, uh, you can't really achieve that. In fact, plus 9, Cecilia is going to get one-shotted by Dalvi, Anastasia. Uh, a lot of strong warriors can one-shot her. Like with plus 15, there's like 50-50% chance she can survive, you know? So yeah, that's, that's a thing to, to take note of. Like in terms of what we are getting right out of the box, as a plus 9 mercenary, I do think Kaoli outperforms Cecilia right there. Alright, if we're talking about plus 15, sure, maybe Cecilia can be a good pick for some people, some formations. So, cheaper alternative, Kaoli for sure. But if you have some resources to spare, okay, so this is for uh, players that perhaps have been playing for maybe 3 to 4 months or even 5 onwards, alright, if you've been playing the game for quite a while maybe 6 months onwards, and you have not owned Cecilia yet, Cecilia is a good pick, alright? So the reason why is because Cecilia is going to counter the Nartas meta, which is going to come really, really soon. Uh, Nartas is going to be a thing in the arena. Nartas is going to be everywhere. Cecilia is going to help negate that. Uh, try and help to save your formation for one more round, you know? Just Nartas hitting Cecilia, Cecilia can absorb that huge tile range. So Cecilia is going to be good for those of you who have been playing the game for a while. But if you're new, I wouldn't recommend going for that because Cecilia is very formation dependent, very setup formation dependent. So you need to be familiar with how to set up your formations and know how to counter certain specific units in your arena's league. And if you're new to the game, probably you are not going to be familiar with the game mechanics just yet to be able to utilize that to the full potential. So in that case, Kaoli is going to help you more because like I mentioned, she's, she's going to shine in all the other areas as well. Like the world boss, evil castle, campaign, etc. So yeah, that's going to be a thing for sure. I would, recomm I would highly recommend going for Kaoli first, alright? Go for Kaoli. If you do already own her, then Cecilia is going to be your second best choice. But do keep in mind that Cecilia is going to need that companions much, much more than Kaoli. Alright, Kaoli, yes, she can be plus 15 and she's going to be pretty strong when she does, but she doesn't really need that as much as Cecilia. Alright, Cecilia really needs that plus 15 more than Kaoli for sure because that extra healing, that extra uh, AoE absorption and things of that nature is going to help her survive even more. Now, if you already own Cecilia, and if you already own Kaoli, who would be your third best pick right now? Alright, I would say most likely Glacier or Lacklist. Alright, if you want to use either one of them, I do think that they are kind of a waste to be honest, because Lacklist per se, 
Likely's plus 9, she gets one-shotted all the time. I've never seen my uh, Wilhelmina or Dalvi fail to like one-shot a Likely's. Likely's is really strong in Guild Wars. If you plan to focus in Guild Wars right now, like you want to enter a strong guild, you have a Likely's. Defense formation, she's going to be really solid right there. Perhaps much better than Kauli in certain cases. But the problem is, like I mentioned, she's not going to be able to survive anything. Like Anastasia one-shots her easily. I've seen her dies to Foxy, she's gonna die to Wilhelmina for sure. She even dies to my Dwen, like which is like extreme lol. Like seriously extreme lol. I've seen my Dwen plus 10, one shot a Lacklist plus 10. Alright, so that's actually a thing. So to go all the way to plus 9 uh, for Lacklist, I feel like it's a waste because for what she's good at, leaving her at plus 0 makes much more sense, right? So if you just want to get Lacklist, for taunt in your defense formation. Like Lacklist is probably one of the best units to set up a defense formation with in the arena because she's just so good. Not many uh, formations have that 5 turn delay or whatever. So most likely all the attacks is going to be redirected to her. So for those who are worried that a lot of players are going to pick Anastasia, Lacklist is going to be a good counter formation to that. But just make sure, just make sure to take note that she's only good in the Defense formation. Offensive wise, she could still be used, but she's not as. She doesn't shine as much there. But that's the thing, right? Uh, you don't really need a Lacklist plus 9 to do that, right? So you can actually easily do that with a Lacklist plus 0. Which is why I think it's kind of a ways to go for Lacklist. Uh, I would still recommend, highly suggest that you go for Cecilia or Cowley if you don't have them already. Alright, so Aaron. I wouldn't recommend picking Aaron right now. Like, some people might say, oh, pick Aaron because he's good in the world boss Ogdut. Like, that's... Like, don't do that, man. Don't do that. Don't listen to those people that say that. Alright, if you do... If you pick Aaron just for one world boss, like, come on. Uh, whatever Aaron can do, Kauli can do better. Way, way better. Alright, especially with a plus 15 right now. Uh, Kauli is much more future-proof than Aaron. Like, there's no denying it. I don't see, like, any reason to go for Aaron. Yeah, there's just, there's just no reason to go for Aaron, like, at all. Once Aaron gets plus 15, yes, sure. Sure, maybe he's gonna be better than Kauli, we never know. But, when is that gonna come? We never know, right? So, as of the time of making this video, I would say Aaron is in a... Not in a good spot. Alright, so Glacia. This is a thing that, you know, many players will be like, Oh, I'm gonna pick Glacia because oh the the Korean server oh my God Glacia is so OP protects from everyone best defender ever, which is true which is true, but you forgot one thing, the most important thing about Glacia is that she needs plus fifteen. Yes, that's actually a thing. You need plus fifteen for Glacia. So, here's the thing, right? If you pick Glacia plus nine right now. What are you going to do with her? Like, let's be honest. Let's be honest, guys. What are you going to do with a plus 9 Glacier? For the next 2-3 to three months, before she comes over to our servers, what are you going to do? You're just going to put her in your inventory, plus 9, sitting there collecting dust? Like, why would you do that? Why? Just pick someone that you can use right now in the meta, Cecilia or Kauli. Makes more sense. Even Lacklist might make more sense. You can actually benefit from uh, getting that properly set up Guild Wars formation defense wise, alright, to counter your opponents, then having a Glacier plus 9 sitting in your inventory collecting dust, doing nothing. I feel like it's a waste. Alright, so don't worry too much about the Glacier meta that's out now in Korea server. I do think that a lot of players like try to overhype this. And I agree, Glacier is really strong, but she needs plus 15. She really needs that plus 15. You cannot use a Glacier at plus 12, plus 13, plus 14, you're gonna not you're not going to benefit from anything. You really need her at plus 15 to be good. And that's a lot of companions to invest in. That's a lot of companions. Alright? So maybe 20,000 diamonds, you might not even get her. So that's the thing, right? All of us are gonna save our diamonds and most likely gonna go for all in in the Legend Scrolls. The focus is on the meta right now, and I feel like Glacier is extremely far away. Uh, for most players to be looking at her right now. Yes, you can prepare and advance, but unless you have enough resources, you know that you won't be pulling right now, which doesn't make sense, and you have enough resources to be, like, go all the way into her banner when she comes to get 
all the companions, five companions, you really need that five companions, then go for it. It's your choice, right? But for most players, like if you're new to the game, right? Picking Glacier, like don't do that. You're digging your own grave. You're literally digging your own grave right now. If you're new, you need Kauli or Cecilia. Help you climb in that, that two to three months. Uh, try and stay up in the ranks, right? Why are you giving other players the advantage that, you know, they are going to have the better defender in their formation and you picking Glacier right now? It's not going to serve you much. So don't worry too much about Glacier meta overall, I would say. Just wait. She's going to come eventually. Don't worry about it. When she comes, you know, I'll make a video on it. I will want you guys save diamonds for her ETC. But to be honest, you will need 5 companions, that's a lot of investment, a lot of resources. Not everyone is going to have that, right? So do keep that in mind. Alright, so Zenith, this is the real struggle with Zenith is... She does not have a plus 15 yet, and she really needs that. So right now, she's not going to survive for, from anything. She's going to die in one hit. Same goes with Lackless, right? <sighs> All the warriors right now literally can one-shot her. And for whatever purpose that she's being used at, basically to cheese opponents into receiving concentrated fire, a plus zero Zenith can do just that. So I feel like it's a waste to go all the way to a plus nine Zenith. I've seen players with plus nine, plus ten Zenith before, but those are veteran players. They have been playing the game for a long time. They invested in Zenith long ago. But investing in Zenith now, like now? Really? No. Heck no. Skip. Alright, if you really want a Zenith to cheese, uh, use the concentrated fire cheese strategy or whatever, just go and pull a bunch of legendaries, alright? Get your mileage up and just pick her, use her at plus zero. You, you don't even need to awaken her, you don't even need to level her up, alright? So she can, you know, just do her thing. Whatever that a plus nine Zenith can do, a plus zero can do equally as good as well. Don't worry about getting a plus nine or a plus ten. Okay, so same goes for Seer. Definitely a skip for me, unless she actually gets a plus 15. That would be interesting to see. So Seer is... she's lost her touch. When she first came out, she used to be like one of the... She used to be the best defender, like she's the queen of everything, right? PvE, PvP, everything. She's really strong. But we all... once the plus 15 mercenaries comes out, like she just got cucked so hard. And right now she's like falling in ranks. Wouldn't recommend using her at all. Um, yeah, definitely a skip. Kauli can do whatever that she can do in a slightly different fashion. Maybe not as good because Seer still has the debuff immunity. PvP-wise, Kauli is going to be better. Maybe Seer still good for PvE, but I wouldn't recommend going for that. We have a bunch of mercenaries that we can pick from the 4-star section, which is extremely prominent and good in PvE, so I'm going to cover that in a separate video of course, or else this video will be like 4 hours long. Alright, so definitely skip Seer, no matter who you are. Alright, unless you're just going for the collection. I know some global players might be tempting because you just obtained the, oh, the Halloween uh, Seer costume. Don't do it. Don't pick your Seer for a Halloween costume. Don't do it, like seriously. If I see any of you pick Seer just so that you can equip a freaking costume, I'm coming to your house and deleting your account. Don't do that. Pick Kauli instead. Whatever you do, Kauli is going to be better 10 times. Alright, Kauli is a better pick than Seer. 10 times. Literally 10 times. Alright, Archon. Now, thing just gets a lot complicated from here onwards. Archon is a very solid choice in certain formations, encountering a lot of Guild Wars formation. Alright, so I've done plenty of Guild Wars videos before, and like, one of the reasons why you would want an Archon right now is just to counter Barbara. Alright, so Barbara uh, suffers to go through 100% defense, and Dalvi cannot be used to counter Barbara because D Barbara has some sort of fixed damage, I mean not really fixed damage, ignores uh, defense at plus 15 because Dalvi has reflective counter. But Archon does not have reflective counter, therefore he's a very solid counter to deal with Barbara. But that's the only use. That's the literally the only use of Archon. Like I don't see any other usage for having an Archon right now. Lillian is gonna be so much better in certain cases because you can at least cheese Lillian with a taunt, right? Like a buff from John or Endolin. But Archon, 
he has that skill that cannot receive buff. So that's like a, it's a nerf to him actually. So wouldn't recommend to pick him right now. In fact, do not go for him at all. If you really want like a solid 100% defense mercenary, that's a more budgety. Go for Lillian, plus 3, she's gonna be enough. And Arkhan is gonna be much more rune dependent than Lillian. Like, whether you like it or not, he's gonna be. So, will not recommend to pick him at all, but... I, I have a very strong feeling that Arkhan would be like the next to have the plus 15. I don't know, it's just my intuition. Based on everyone on this list, it's either going to be Arkhan or Zenith because they are two of the older mercenaries, right? Alright, so Doraemon is gonna be a hard choice as well. Alright, so I wouldn't recommend picking Doraemon right now because... Like, he's one of the worst mercenaries in this list, in my opinion. He's only used really strong in world boss Ogdot. And that's about it. Literally one world boss, which is Ogdot. At least Kaoli can be good in Ogdot and the Tyrion and Zaratan as well. Three world bosses. Kaoli can be good in three world bosses. If you want to pick a mercenary for world boss reasons, go for Kaoli. Alright, so Diomaron is definitely a skip for me. Maybe he can be used to cheese... A certain strategy like I used to remember that people used to put a fatal rage rune on Diomaron and counter Vals because Vals is not immune to DOT but Sloan can do pretty much that as well so there's a lot of strategies where you can cheese with Diomaron it used to be that way but with all the new mercenaries coming out constantly most of them have the ability as well Acha can do that as well right so there's no reason to actually go for Diomaron anymore I feel like it's such a waste. And the last one we have Kaylin. So Kaylin, definitely a skip as well. She's much more complex in terms of usability because her ability relies heavily on stigma. It does not go through debuff immunity. Alright, so stigma is a very unique one and most mercenaries that does not have any sort of debuff immunity will get affected. If a mercenary has attack interference immunity, they will get stigmatized. Alright, if a, a unit has DOT immunity, he or she will get stigmatized. Alright, so stigma is still a really solid form of debuff, but in terms of debuff immunity units, there are like just plenty of them right now in the arena. She needs to have some sort of reflect alongside with that stigma. Like she's she's just struggling right now compared to how dominant Kaoli and Cecilia is gonna be. Uh, definitely not gonna bother with her at all. Alright, so to sum it up, if you are completely new to the game, Kaoli is still the best one to pick. Alright, Cecilia is going to be a close second. Do keep in mind, Cecilia will need much more investment than Kaoli. Alright, whether you like it or not. And Cecilia is going to be much more formation dependent compared to Kaoli. Kaoli is a lot easier to set up in a formation because she has taunt. You can just place her anywhere. And she's going to like basically magnet, magnetize all the attacks towards her. Cecilia... Sure, you can use Eindolin or whatever, but you're gonna need that extra unit and not everybody has that extra resources and are willing to try and tinker around and adjust the formation. So in terms of flexibility, Kaoli is gonna be way better. Alright, so first pick Kaoli, second pick Cecilia. Third, I would say maybe I'm torn between Lacklist and Glacia right now. I'm gonna side towards... Uh, I'm gonna side towards Lacklist because right now, for the next two to three months, I have a feeling lots of players are going to pick Anastasia and Lacklist is a good counter to that like because Anastasia covers such a huge area such a huge AOE area Lacklist might be the best like counter to that alright Glacia might be the fourth and I would rate the rest equal as the fifth okay so that sums it up that's going to be it for this video guys hope you enjoyed it it's a little bit of a long video a little bit of a rant but I hope that my reasoning makes sense to you guys. Alright, so if you agree or disagree, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe, give this video a like, and stay tuned for the next upcoming videos on the remaining guides. I think I'll do two more. And yeah, and the Legend Mercenary will be the last. Have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>